So we'll have Mr. Narona it's talking right now. For about 10 15 minutes, we, uh, you know, we can go up to half an hour. I was very happy to hear a lot of inputs given by this gentleman about Bombay, go and other things. But uh, uh, Bombay, in fact, you know, was under Portuguese. But at that time, there was the detached islands, few islands detached. And they did very little, by a few churches and uh, some one or two streets. They did very little. But British, when they, Britishers, when they came here, they had a new dimension to for the whole thing. And Bombay of today is a product of uh, British planning and uh, concept and planning. As I was telling you just earlier, uh, Tianjin and other cities were not planned, so to say. Now, the Portuguese came here in 1510. They, they didn't occupy Tianjin, they occupied Old Goa. Old Goa was a center, Muslim center at that time. They had planned in a very small scale. They had a inner fortification by name, with four doors only. And this inner fortification is hardly 1,300 uh, 1, meters in width and 1,700 in length. So it's a very small city. But outside the walled city, there are very small nucleus of population, Muslim population. When Abu Kher conquered that in 1510, he immediately reinforced that fort because he had brought those ideas from the western side. And you know, every 10 years, 15 years, the logistics of the, of the uh, war uh, is changed completely. Now, at that time, a cannon was not going more than 300 meters. Later on, 500, then 800, then 1,700. So after 40 or 50 years, one viceroy came here, and he made, in fact, one practical demonstration as what would be the range of the cannons that they had. And they noticed that it was 1,800 meters. So he really wrote to the, vice, to the king in Portugal, saying that we are living in an in a, in a area highly, cannot be defended anyhow, any, anymore due to logistic, change of logistics of the airport. And he said, today, one, bull, uh, one uh, cannonball, if it is stuck against the wall, will destroy the wall. So we should have an outer fortification. And then he devised an outer fortification, means either fortification or the small nucleus. Around, he, wanted, he devised a fortification of 17 kilometers, just imagine. Uh, and then he, he put, first uh, uh, gate was Gandoli, then Manastery, uh, then uh, Magira all by name. Magira, Magira means mango tree. There were many mango, mangoes, mango trees there, so he called it Magira. He didn't know the name, but it was in fact Kurli. So he, there he built one door. Ruins are still there, beautifully. If somebody wants to go to study the logistics of the 16th century, will be very largely benefited by seeing that system of defense system uh, conceived at that time. Then other was Kurli, then, uh, uh, then Gandoli, and finally, uh, then finally Gandoli on this side. Uh, and the old uh, entrance was the palace of Arch of Viceroy's. That still you can see there at Old Goa if you go. You must have gone to Old Goa and you must have seen that uh, doorway which is there at the end of Old Goa. We were going on Friday to Old Goa. We'll be making a visit to Old Goa on Friday. Uh, yes. So this is the uh, cost of that time. So, in fact, it was a, a great safeguard that new, um, new fortification was a great safeguard because Muslims uh, were so much upset with the presence of Portuguese here that in 1578 they thought of uh, driving away the Portuguese. And all they did, they made a large colligation, big colligation is known. They invited the, uh, the, uh, the Raja of uh, of uh, Gujarat, uh, of uh, King of Mughal, and also uh, Adil Shah's forces, and south of Samuri, of Calicut. And all those coligations, they came and this encircled the old goal. At that time, a new viceroy had come. And then he went to see 
there so many camels, so many elephants, so many horses, and uh, guns and cannons, many things. Then she saw they were all appalled because Portugal had hardly uh, 800 soldiers and few uh, cavalry, cavalry and uh, elephants and other things. So some two or three people said, in fact, this uh, fortification may save us. Uh, and that was conceived by Doan Town Zandaraj, the first Viceroy. Don't say Doan Town, you say Saint Antown. Saint with Saint. <laughs> uh, because there is one Saint Antown in uh, Portuguese uh, iconology. And then she says, okay. Uh, immediately she built one altar to Saint Antown in Old Goa, which is still there in the chapel of the mount. Uh, and uh, in the same night, what they did, they devised uh, a nice system. They sent one, two, three, a small batch of three, four soldiers with gunpowder and just they put fire under the, under the feet of one elephant. When that explosion took place, the elephant <laughs> jumped and created the havoc and they, they didn't know what it was. And finally, the whole this congregation of 40, 50,000 soldiers with all this uh, paraphernalia of elephants and, ca and cavalry, everything had to go away. This was the, how this old Go city was saved due to that outer fortification. So, after, the, after a few centuries, two or three centuries, there was a collapse of old Go due to lack of hygienic, uh, especially the drainage, and water and everything. And plus plagues. Uh, one side one side was uh, malaria, which they know, didn't know the etiology of the sickness of malaria, what it was. The cholera and so many sickness. So they have had to leave Old Goa. But where they would go, they thought of going to Vasco da Gama, present city in Marmago. While they were planning that, they, in fact, they sent a team. They started constructing this small, small nucleus for the future capital. But the, the things were so bad that in 1759, one viceroy who was there, he saw the situation and he came quietly to Penju. But earlier, in 1632, such, there, there was a fam famous college of St. Paul's in Old Goa under the Jesuits. These Jesuits were, of course, mathematicians, astronomers, and, and uh, architects also. They designed, you know, after the old Goa is, remains on the eastern side. On the western side, five kilometers away, there is a small hamlet known as Raibandar. This Raibandar village was cut off by one large stream, and then waters of River Banduvi were during high tide was completely flooding the whole area in front of, of, uh, of Ribandar. So what they did, they immediately conceived the Jesuits, the, the humanists, they were humanists, they were engineers, they were philosophers, they were scholastic, everything. What they did is yes, they put one embankment come bridge, bridge come embankment, and they put, uh, they linked Ribandar with Tanjim. It was a 3,225 meters in length of a stone bridge with, with a wooden foundation. You would, uh, you would admire how wooden foundation could support such thing. We have here a Zambo by name, one wood, one tree, which grows uh, right up to 40 meters in height. And this Zambo is a such tree that once it, it gets dried up, is cut and dried up, and put in the seabed, never gets spoiled. So what they did, they just made pointed ends to the death and started burying that. In the whole that stretch, they could find everywhere, in, because at that time, uh, our ecology has not been trampled by human hands. And we had large forest area. And these trees were on large quantity also. They bought that, they cut, and they started burying, and they stabilized the whole bed, because the you know, mud is very, very tricky uh, media for the construction. Any construction built in, in uh, mud goes on sinking. So they stabilized that, and they put stones, such stones, large stones, uh, and they built this, which you can see even now. Unfortunately, this government spoiled that, the beauty of those arches by put, widening the road and putting an RCC. 
So as you see with the stone, it's a very bad combination and it spoiled completely the architectonic uh, uh, view of the bridge. Uh, this bridge gave a new impetus for people from Old Gold to come to Penjim. So Penjim was completely marshy place, but it was a, 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 a place because it was also a historic uh, site because Muslims had one small castle here at present Secretariat. I don't know whether they have seen. No, not yet. They have just come. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> one Secretariat, and there they had a small fort, Muslim fort, with with uh, moats around. Moats, of course, is a old system of not to, not to get attacked quickly. Uh, so he came here and he demolished the fort in 1756, one viceroy. So this account of Iga by name, he came and he filled those uh, uh, moats and uh, demolished that uh, fort and built one small secretariat and a house for him. And he started because going to Olgo, immediately you will get malaria, you will get all sorts of diseases. He set up in 1756. So once he set up there, uh, he, he, he almost used to sign all documents, all orders, acts, everything for pension. So Olgo by itself started to get in decline. Uh, the, the decline of Olgo, all buildings started coming down. Those stones and things were brought to Penjim little by little. By 1758 uh, or 59, one Goan who had gone to Mozambique, South Africa, he made a lot of money and he brought pounds in gold. Uh, and then he started, uh, what you do with gold here? At that time gold didn't have so much attraction like today. So what he did, he approached government and he got on lease a whole area right from the bridge up to up to Portais, means a distance of three and a half kilometers in length. And what he did, he filled up and put coconut trees. With, with, with the growth of coconut trees, yield start, it was so much of coconuts, and what he would do with coconuts, he had to sell it or do something. What he, what he did, he invited uh, oil extractors from Old Goa, they had uh, special gadgets for, to extract oil from the for coconut, dry coconut. And he brought and he established one building of uh, these uh, coconut uh, extractors was bought by Mr. Jack a few years ago. Okay. Exactly. One. one is in the way in the Lodge of Kamota. I don't know you Actually, know. we'll walk around. Uh, so, you know, uh, so maybe you can even show us while we are walking so, around. At that time, at that time, uh, they had two oil extracting machines, and he made a lot of money. Unfortunately, in 1782, he died. When he died, this whole area, Portugal government, is, was got like British with his large views and other things. The quietly they handed over to the religious order of Carmelites. Carmelites was a very poor order. They said, oh, you give us that land to us. We will do the same work that that fellow was doing who died. That it was given to them. These people, without caring for anything, they started giving small pieces of land on these people who were flying, uh, 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 living Old Goa in a hurry. Because Old Goa was a place which could not be, uh, nobody could stay there due to malaria and other places. So literally people started coming here. Since uh, oil extractors came here, they also came along with them. And small, small houses uh, started being built in the whole this stretch. It is not a fountain because there was a fountain. In Portuguese, fountain is fonte. And the diminutive of the font word is fontainous. So they they had water there, they established there. But in 1834, the water came from Portugal that we have now established to shift the capital from Old Goa to Penjim. So in Penjim, uh, so the city was in a shabby condition, there was no road, nothing. So one governor came and he was on horseback and says, you, all these huts which are in this alignment should be removed. And they made one small road of, of this wheat, which you see now, very narrow. That's historic. They could not widen it more because people would suffer. 
and Portuguese are people, sentimental people. They look after also the, the, the interests of uh, people. So they said, yes, four meters enough for one uh, bullock cart to pass through. Because at that time, no cars, no vehicles, only bullock carts and the horses driven the vehicle, one or two of key of uh, Viceroy and uh, or some two or three uh, high officers. So they did that. So it is for this reason that you see Fontaine's area, very with narrow roads. For this purpose, in 1982, I established here the Indian Heritage Society for protection of our sites, old sites, and got approval of all government uh, channels, because at that time I was an uh, officer of certain uh, rank, and they respected my views, and the orders were passed, everything. But now see the dire mockery of fate, we call it. One house here has been uh, demolished and a four-story building has been built. Means there's no, <laughs> is a kick on our all effort of uh, 22 years. And this, this government is accepting that. This is unfortunate part. Means we cannot go on for having any concept of cons conservation of heritage or anything because this government is so materialistic today, they want money, nothing else. <laughs> this is unfortunate part of our <laughs> modus vivendi. <laughs> well, now coming to Pagin. The nucleus was already started here. Well, Portuguese people are very religious people. They cannot go on without a church, a chapel, or everything. Everywhere. This was a medieval concept in Europe also. In Europe also it started with big um, churches, mosques, uh, and India also, in India also, we had temples and everything. So these people come, as most of the people were converted, either forcibly or by their voluntarily, but anyhow, they, they had a large local population, Christian population. So they thought of putting a chapel, that's so much so that the chapel of St. Sebastian has come over there. In fact, originally this chapel was in the middle of the road. When the road was open, they shifted the chapel and they brought far away, five, four hundred meters away from there. And they built the small nucleus and leaked with the fountain because they needed water. So this road goes straight right from the uh, that cross section of the road of uh, the large bridge to the fountain spring of uh, Fontaine's. So this is the history of the Fontaine's area. Well, but Fontaine's area was completely detached from the rest of the area of Belgium because there was a ridge, this ridge which of, uh, say, 75, uh, 54 meters up and down. It runs up to the church of our Belgium church and goes up to the river. So the, there was no connection between this part and that part. So in 1854, uh, when the governor came and then he devised of uh, a, a plan, a scheme, to just cut the hill. And they, they a hill in the length of three, uh, 280 meters was completely cut and leaked, was leaked, see, frontiers, was leaked with the central zone of Belgium. So at least there was one connection. And also on the riverside, they, uh, they filled it with the soil in some areas and they extended and so there was another road there. So two roads now we have got linking with central uh, area. Now recently in 1940s, 42 or 43, uh, another road was, was uh, built at the back of the fountain linking with Altiri. So there is also a link on the, that side. So only three roads with link with the, with, uh, with the uh, eastern side, the western side. This is eastern side and that's the western side. This is it. And then we have got a small rivulet, which was a beautiful thing. And we had thought of doing this, something like Venice. In Venice, every, you know how it is all river, um, sea, and it is a beautiful. Some buildings are really floating in the, in the, sea, in the sea. So like that, we wanted to have a plan like that. But this government uh, is not allowing, and it was degenerated to the... And the other area was large paddy fields. And the paddy fields was yielding a large amount of rice for us at that time. But now everything comes from India, from Bihar, from Uris and other places. And uh, people started building 
government itself devised a, a, a plan to build a new complex there for large building of large commercial and business houses. So business houses in a topsy-turvy way, no planning, nothing, nothing. So Panjim is completely today spoiled because there is no master plan. They have they devised a plan like the Britishers do with a large concept. They, have, they could not conceptualize this. But one Portuguese viceroy, governor, I must give credit to him. He had come here in 1908, and you know, Portuguese got uh, mon uh, the monarchy was over by 1910. But in 1908, this fellow came as a last monarchical governor of Goa. His name was Orta I Costa, he was a man of great knowledge. He was an engineer of the army, and he came here. And one day he says, we have got beautiful riverfront, why not a road? Uh, and what he did, at that time, in 1908, we didn't have any car. We had only four or five uh, Victorias uh, drawn by horses. And they all were uh, drawn by bullock carts, only that much. And we had, he had a small council of six or eight people, guns lawyers, all learned people. And he, they, he said, let's have a marginal role uh, of the type like Marine Drive in Bombay. I don't know if you have been there. Everywhere in, the, in Europe, th there are marginal roads near the river, near the sea. So he said, he devised. And what he did, he put uh, close to the river, he put a, a wall. Uh, and uh, he kept a footpath of three meters. Then four meters, a small strip of road. Then again, one strip for trees. Then another strip is seven meters for, car, uh, for vehicles to go on this side, and on this side to come, also seven, seven, fourteen. Then again repeated for trees uh, and footpath. It came to 40 meters. This man, he had, had council of 10, 10, 12 people. I said, oh, I've devised one marginal road, and he put the plan before. All they were revolted. Why? One road, one major road, one small road, eight meters will, will do for you. Why such a life? He kept quiet. Each one started criticizing him. This waste of money, waste of this. Then he kept quiet. Then he says, he says ah, well, let's close our session of today. Everybody got up. But most of them had a nice big belly. Then he says, you know why I'm building this? Just for you to walk. You had to put down this valley, and with that finished, and he brought. And the only place that we have built in 1908, beautiful avenue, you will see. Uh, but you have got cars to go. Uh, actually, right now we just walk in the closer yes. business.